this view from the cockpit taken by Ian uh, sort of shows us uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, the five ecosystem and the Boris ecosystem and you can see from the five ecosystem that there were many gullies, trees and, and it does change and uh, as you will see during my talk these uh, gullies have a lot of influence on the total flux along a 15 kilometer transect and, and uh, Boreas it's, uh, it's the boreal forest, it's, there are no simple complex, there is all ecosystem are complex even though if you select a site or for black spruce or aspen there there's all a mixture of, of trees and uh, and uh, it's rather complex so uh, during five we did uh, uh, many different flight pattern uh, aircraft aircraft intercomparison was a common we did that ten times uh, L and T pattern that we fl would fly at two or four level uh, two to four level and uh, we did that's one hundred and nine times and and these were intended to compare with tower based measurement because in these L flight and T flight we overpassed the tower the tower system but they were not it, the comparison as you will see was not very good because we were not we're looking at apple and oranges almost budget studies uh, double stack I'll talk uh, Alan Best was involved with this grid flight we did 12 grid flight and the grid flight is uh, eight eight pass repeated twice uh, repeated uh, once and uh, make 16 line we would fly that 100 meter a night flight with uh, uh, I've never published the result, but we'll see it's quite interesting. And regional flight, because we're located in Salina, we would have to fly back and forth. So that gave us a chance to do a 75, 77 kilometer flight 47 times. So, uh, aircraft intercomparison, uh, this is the one in King Air. And the agreement was is excellent, basically. Uh, you would get the same uh, flux value between two aircraft when they're flying side by side uh, uh, within. Uh, a few percent. So, uh, the, uh, the when we compare with the tower, though, here I show the average of the tower measurement during the, the various in, intensive field campaign versus the aircraft and the sensible lead, for example. Uh, I, I, I should say first the sum of latent and sensible lead from the aircraft were considerably smaller than the sum of sensible lead and water vapor from the tower, but because we, there was flux divergence where I, we flew at 100 meter. The, the transect, even though they were 15 kilometers for an aircraft, 15 kilometers is rather short. Uh, and I pass filtering, uh, I'll say a lot more about this I pass filtering. We calculated flux many different ways, and I pass filtering was giving us a constant, very, very repeatable uh, flux value from one run to the next, but not necessarily direct underestimated flux value but uh, so basically though you can already already spot that sensible heat versus the aircraft was considerably lo lower by the aircraft uh, measurement and water vapor seemed to be almost the same because the, the water vapor should have been lower too but because we're, with the aircraft were measuring the evaporation from gully we were getting this bias a little bit so but, uh, with Alan Betts it was quite involved with looking at the uh, the double stack where we would fly at uh, four elevation, 15 kilometer apart, and the wind's coming like this. And uh, he's written a couple of papers on this. And basically, we underestimated the flux, aircraft underestimated the flux by about 20%, even when we accounted for uh, uh, things like uh, the, uh, flux divergence and storage storm. Uh, but the main thing was the uh, filtering of, uh, of that five kilometer filtering. Uh, was causing us to underestimate the flux enormously and I will tell you more about this. So uh, some of the grid for example uh, here we were using block averaging so every, uh, we did this grid flight many times and the, uh, the CO2 flux here is superimposed on a Cosmos satellite uh, and uh, red means very green vegetation and uh, and uh, basically it resembled very much although you could see there's a 26 kilogram uh, a kilogram to convert CO2 to, to, from milligram to meter square per second to you divide to divide by 36 uh, kilogram. Uh, I was working in agriculture in those days quite a bit, and uh, uh, the farmers talked of uh, uh, crop growth in kilogram per hectare per hour. But uh, so uh, evapotranspiration, very nice relationship again. More, where it's greener, we had more evaporation. Uh, this is a, a, the night flight we did where uh, we, we, we did a flight uh, around midday 
uh, by Shashi line, the Shashi Tower and by Mar Wilson's Tower. And at night we repeated this at uh, at 100 meters. It was a tour de force. Uh, the, the, uh, fly at those low altitude, but basically we the, the CO2 flux, for example, was was zero at the top of the boundary layer, basically, while the uh, tower base were measuring about 0 0.09. So, uh, and it, it's quite nice to see that the boundary layer is like a cuvette and it closes the system. And uh, it, uh, later on, Elizabeth will show us she used a balloon to measure the profile, change in profile of. Uh, Various uh, uh, CO2 and methane, and it's a good way to uh, you've got a closed system. So uh, we did a lot of these regional runs. I sent for, uh, uh, from Salina to Kansas at 47 during this, and we we this allowed us to look at the long wavelength contribution. What happened if you uh, like what we were doing? We this is done after find on that we were not, uh, a few years ago we started looking at the long wavelength contribution and you see that uh, 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 for sensible heat, for heat and heat and sensible heat, uh, uh, on average, this is the average, uh, we did 29 runs, so each of these are based about 10, 10 flights and uh, uh, basically you, by filtering you underestimate a lot and sometimes up to 35%, sometimes practically nothing. Uh, and sometimes uh, you estimate almost 50%, 30 or 40 percent, or three or four percent. So uh, with a five-kilometer filter at 150 meter, substantial underestimation. So uh, a lot of this is learned after the fact, you know. But uh, flight during Boreas, we knew a little bit more. But we still did aircraft, aircraft into comparison. Lots of aircraft tower into comparison. 86 now, and uh, these uh, the tower there were were more a uh, relatively homogeneous area. So we did a lot of grid flight, 32. Candle Lake run, uh, 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 many, uh, we started learning that we, we have to do long transect. We did L flight, which I will say a bit more on that. We did a flight at down CO2 study where Jilin wrote, Jilin Sun wrote a nice paper where she showed that there were no, there were a lot of venting. The lake is warmer at night, lots of venting and people trying to measure the flux of CO2 by a tower near the lake will underestimate the respiration enormously. So nice paper I given on this topic. So the tower aircraft comparison was a bit better here, but still uh, not perfect. But uh, definitely we measured larger length and heat flux by the aircraft because the tower located uh, on the drier area. We measured substantially less sensible heat. We're still underestimating a little bit because of the high pass filtering and the short run and flux divergence with light, which we did not correct. What, what we did though there, here is how to go to on, look at larger scale stuff, like we're using the towers uh, measurements. For, uh, for example, this is the southern study area. We had four tower system and flying a grid pattern. We knew how, my, how, my, how much area, black spruce, jack pine. And so we flew a grid and we basically got very good agreement uh, between the mean of est measured by the aircraft versus the estimated by the no using the tower-based measurement at the same time as we air fly the air aircraft, and uh, uh, so w uh, this was pretty good agreement. While in the northern area, the agreement was very very poor. Northern, so that, northern but they had not put a tower at the. Uh, there were no tower representing the uh, Aspen, and the Aspen is such a. Uh, Gross, uh, lots of CO2 for instance, uh, so we underestimated the flux enormously when we tried to use the uh, because we did not uh, include the the, the uh, Aspen flux measurement. So in Boris, we did a uh, agricultural run because we had to get back to the to, uh, so we did a 20 kilometer transect uh, quite frequently at a low altitude, 30 meters, and with this data, I w we started to look at the uh, uh, the contribution at, at long wavelength and here, compared to what we had seen in Boreal, in Fife, contribution was very, very small because in, in, uh, in Fife, there was, the terrain is very undulating and, uh, and we're flying 100 meter, here we're flying 30 meter and uh, you can see the underestimation is, is rather small. Uh, but there are many ways to calculate the fluxes and we, uh, Ian always reported uh, uh, flux, uh, raw flux, uh, uh, linear detrended, 
uh, nonlinear high pass filter data and uh, and and we decided to recently look at wa using wavelet analysis because uh, wavelet analysis get uh, a lot of the theoretical assumptions of the identity covariance method are not always met. There's not there are non-stationary condition, lack of homogeneity. While this assumption is not required using wavelet analysis, and wavelet analysis is very nice too because it allows you to see all the contribution to the flux. E even at 100 meter, you get all the contribution to the flux. That that uh, and otherwise you need to. Uh, 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 15, 20 kilometer. Uh, so all the, this is giving us a lot of insight on. on uh, so here I will show. Uh, I've looked at the uh, the five regional run. There were some, uh, there were 47 of those, and compared the raw flux, the mean raw flux for for uh, this is carbon dioxide. But as you would expect, the filtered one is a bit less, but the detrended one and, and raw is basically the same, and. Uh, and the wavelet for CO2 is exactly the same too, so not much gain there. Same thing for, for sensible heat, uh, detrended, basically the same. I pass always a bit less because, and we've, but for water vapor, this is a, the, the real water vapor, and I, I've done that for five, I've done that for five years, and using wavelet, the water vapor flux is much, much with that kind of information, it will allow us to close the budget that we were not closing before. And, and I still have to try to understand. It's not a long wavelength contribution. It is, a, it is all over the whole co-spectra. So it, it's a puzzle that um, will allow me to keep on working for a bit longer. So the, the Candle Lake run, what we, what we did there, uh, uh, we look at using wavelet co-spectral rather than, and uh, we put a cutoff filter, let's say two kilometer. Uh, most of the time was using five kilometer. And here, uh, Matthias Maury wrote uh, some nice paper. He was a uh, uh, PDF uh, with me, and uh, it, uh, it shows uh, you at any time like this transect shows the surface temperature. So you pass over Candle Lake, it's cooler. And uh, you're able to see the flux contribution, sensible heat, water vapor, and CO2 uh, for at any short distance for the whole spectrum with using wavelength analysis. It's really remarkable. Like, uh, for example, you're, you're flying over a lake here. There's some, still some long wavelength contribution to flux of water vapor, at, but nothing at a short wavelength. So uh, th this is quite neat. It allows us to look at uh, a bit of the possibility of the underestimation of fluxes uh, due to long mesoscale transfer. And sometimes it's exactly the same for uh, all the, uh, here I look at the contribution over two kilometers. So, some case, some days, it's the same for water vapor sensibility and, water, and CO2. Other days, there are big, big differences for one fluxes uh, for water vapor, for example. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it gives us a lot of insight on the underestimation of flux. So that's basically what, what we learned from this um, uh, using wave analysis, with mesoscale for contribution, 10, 30 percent, uh, uh, the order of magnitude of the imbalance, uh, that mesoscale, tower base sometimes underestimate by 20 percent in the fluxes. And, and uh, there's a lot of information there, energy balance. It, Things like energy balance correction for sensible elite according to Born ratio cannot be justified. Uh, correction of CO2, same thing. N new approach based on information about spatial flux and spectral data I needed to obtain more realistic environmental response function and to increase the value of stuff like that. This is what I'll spend the rest of my talk on. Uh, you, you have, for example, uh, you, you have an aircraft along a long transect and with a footprint gives us information about uh, different mosaic and, and you can get this information now uh, every 100 meter you know the contribution of uh, so what we uh, what to develop this environmental response function we we uh, use satellite information land use and uh, and uh, develop environmental response function for predicting relevant variables such as sensible heat flux carbon dioxide flux and I will show what we have done in Western Canada. During, we use the data that uh, for the agricultural run that uh, we did every day, and we, did, we, we trained the data to, to, with these environmental response functions to, to predict latent flux, for example, using a NOAA imagery. Uh, 
I'm, uh, Don Strobel mentioned that he has all kinds of, uh, there's a tape uh, CD on, uh, uh, on uh, all the spectral data that was collecting during Fife and Boreas. I'm really looking forward to using this compared to sort of this crude information, but even with this crude information, we're able to take the satellite data from uh, NOAA, IVHR, and arrive at prediction of sensible latent heat CO2 flux on a, at a regional scale. So, Fife and Boreas really helped the aircraft team, and there's no doubt about it, like uh, uh, we, we learned to do uh, aircraft LIDAR comparison, for example, allow us to visualize the updraft and downdraft uh, 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 and grid flight. We air, uh, the aircraft, aircraft comp intercomparison, initially, I, needed, I showed the 89 and 87, it was not as good as that, and there was a lot of fine tuning done. Uh, uh, it, Fife and Boyers increase our awareness of the importance of footprint concept enormously. Peter Shrepp wrote a paper, it's uh, about 800 citation, and, uh, uh, and uh, it's really uh, where we really understood that uh, to relate flux to a surface, you must use a footprint function, and now there's some excellent footprint function that exists. We learn about a lot more on energy budget closure, and most of all, Fife and Boyers provided the database of integrated observation which are essential for understanding land-atmosphere interaction. So we learn, we learn a lot from, uh, from this, uh, we, uh, from Fife and Boreas. For example, uh, uh, we, we always knew that flux measurement, that meteorological assumption are essential for model testing, but you cannot measure flux everywhere uh, because there's, there are situations where flux systems don't work very well. So we need models, and, uh, and, and uh, we'll come to this later. But so if I were redoing Fife and Boreas today, my advice would be uh, forget about too much of the tower aircraft comparison, to, and just do two things, basically. Budget studies to investigate how good the aircraft measuring system is. And to do a good budget study, for example, uh, one flight that we did uh, in Boris is to, to uh, uh, L pattern, L uh, 40 kilometer, 40 kilometer, and do this at three level and repeat it so that, so you do six flights. So we end up doing uh, six times uh, 80, uh, uh, six times 80, uh, 480 kilometer, which is quite reasonable in one flight. And uh, you're able to test exactly how, how well your flux measuring system is. And then once you've done that, uh, you, you're confident you have a, you, your test should be done under fairly clear conditions so that uh, uh, you don't have uh, too much of a, uh, entrainment on top of the boundary here. Uh, then you use the aircraft flux measure over long transect, like 100 kilometer, in conjunction with satellite data, should be used to develop environmental response function that can be used for in testing and improving models. Right, a couple of minutes. Yeah, two minutes left. Uh, finally, uh, recently we've, we've uh, the, uh, the, I put the slide, showed uh, some young colleagues when they were in 80, 87, and uh, we had, uh, we, we recently uh, wrote a paper where we uh, document that the database is available, uh, raw data from Fife you know, that the Ian had, had documented so well, and uh, we'll put it in the government site and we'll encourage young researchers to use it. And, uh, and finally, the, I'd like to thank Pierce and Forrest for all your effort and fantastic leadership. It has been great, been very great. Uh, uh, I started in, uh, in uh, 84, I met Pierce in uh, Europe, uh, and he told me about this, this Fife experiment he was planning, and I was very excited. And, uh, it certainly changed our world. Thank you very much.